Okay, the purpose of this WebEx recording is to walk through the flow of how to set up a simulation where you want to sweep IBIS file names, or you may want to sweep the model name, or the component name, or the PIN number, or you may even want to change the corner cases. So we're going to be using the batch simulator, and we're going to be using a CSV file to, to control that batch simulation to walk through the different parameters, which will be the file name, model name, et cetera. And although we're not gonna sweep a lot of things here, we are gonna show the setup that allows you to sweep these different uh, settings within an IBIS file. Let's go ahead and take a look at the schematic that we'll be using. And let's just kind of walk through this schematic so that we understand it. So this is basically a DDR2 uh, type of fan out simulation. Over here we have the driver, then we have the channel, and we fan out and we go to basically uh, the four receivers. So this driver over here, all right, is a vertex IBIS model, and this comes from an old high-speed digital I.O. Uh, workshop. And uh, so many of you may have seen uh, this uh, schematic before, okay? So that's the vertex model that's being used over here. Over here, we're using a IBIS file, all right? That comes from Micron for the memory. Okay, so that's the setup, driver, fan out, our channel, and then the four receivers. Let's look a little closer at the transient controller. So we're running at 266 megahertz, all right? Again, I said this was a, a very old example, and we have the substrate statement here for the transmission lines, and then we have this important variable statement. So notice that the IBIS file name is assigned to data file list one, and the file name, the IBIS uh, component name is assigned to string list one, and the string, the model name is assigned to string list two component, and the IBIS pin name is assigned to string list three. So let's try to situate the schematic so we can take a look at those. So here the file name is, we're only using one file name on the micron here, and it's the U37Y that we just looked at, and that uses a data file list. If you not wanna know where these components are located, you can come in here under simulation and go to the batch simulation palette, All right, and with that batch simulation, you have a data file list, you have a string list, and you can also have a net list that is included in this, and that will be used in a different uh, video, not in the one uh, where we're sweeping all things IBIS. Okay, so that's where you can find those components. You can also search for them. All right, by typing in the search window, or you can also go to the library and under description type in list of data files for batch simulator, data file list, okay, and then the palette that that occurs in. And these are in a couple of different palettes. All right, so let's take a look at this. Notice that the data file list one file name is tied in under to here. So there's our data file list. The IBIS component name is string list one string. And it's assigned that component name. The model name, we're actually going to sweep between two of them, the DMN 800 and the DM on determination 150 800. 
all right, and then string list three or the IBIS pin name is tied to J3, which is the pin number. And then we have the other variable representing corner. So let's see how all of these variables and the string list and data file list are tied together. All right, if we come over and look at this, so we have the IBIS file for this IBIS component is set to IBIS file name, which is this variable that points to the data file list one, which points to this file name. Let's go to here and we have the component name, which is tied to IBIS comp name. That IBIS comp name again is tied to string list one, which is tied to this uh, component name here. Then we also have the uh, pin name, which is tied to IBIS pin name. And then we also have the model name, which is tied to IBIS model name. And that is tied to these strings here. So this would be the pin, this would be the model name. And we are sweeping two of these. All of these others only have one item in the sweep. Okay, so that's how we can tie the variable to the setting on the IBIS file, to using a data file list and string list. Okay, and let's go ahead and come in here. All right. And if we come and look at this, right, notice that under the alias tab for the IBIS file, we have the box check to use alias, and we have the IBIS file alias, the component name alias, the pin name alias, and the model name alias, and those all correspond to these variables here. Okay, so that's how you can set up to sweep either the file name, uh, the component name, model name, or, or the pin uh, name on these. Okay, so make sure you got that checkbox for use alias, and then put in your variable names to each of the associated sections being used in those aliases. Lastly, let's come into the batch simulation controller, right? And let's take a look at this. So this batch simulation controller is tied to the analysis known as TRAN1. So it's tied to this transient simulation. And let's go ahead and open the dialog box for this. And we see that we're gonna use a sweep module here, all right? And the module name is we're gonna use a CSV list, all right? And the file name is test CSV. So we're gonna to browse to that file. Notice that it's under the data folder, which is the default place to look. We'll select it, all right? And now we can edit it and view that. It comes up in something known as WordPad, which has the executable write.exe. And notice that we have the data file list one, the string list one here, the string list two, string list three, and corner. So data file list one is the first variable, and so we have uh, the indice of one set for that. Right, then we have string list one, which is set to the component name, string list two, which is set to the model name, and string list three, which is set to the pin. So the only one that we're really changing the indice on is this string list two, which is associated with the model uh, name, and it's oscillating between one and two, one and two, one and two, one and two. Then we also change the corner. So as we sweep the model name, we have the first corner, sweep the model name again, go to the second corner, model name again, go to the third corner, model name again, go to the fourth corner, model name sweep, and go to the fifth corner. Now, yeah. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at the vertex IBIS file. And as we come into the vertex IBIS file here, notice that uh, we're uh, checked to set all data and we have it tied to corner. So typically when you come into this, you're gonna see typical, min, max, fast, and slow. And these all can be assigned numbers such as one, two, three, four. If we want to use a unique one, we set the blank and then type in the variable name here. So that's how we created that. Corner is set there. Okay. If we go to help on this and then open up that help, okay, we can come in here and look for the section that comes under here and we have set all data and then we have a way of selecting uh, the fast and, and corners here. Let's find uh, the nomenclature for this and see if they describe the numbers versus the corner. All right, so we're getting to typical min, okay? And right here, it's uh, highlighted, okay? So the allowed values under these uh, parameters allows the values one, two, three, four, or five, all right? And if we wanna see the, the details, it tells us we can go to model parameters So we'll go there, and then we see that one is typical, two is minimum, three is max, four is fast, and five is slow, okay? But we've come in and set it to a variable by going down to the blank here and then typing that in, and we need to apply that and say okay, All right? So we can see that the data type selector is set to the variable corner. Now, real quick, just a quick ADS tip while we're at it. All right, we're gonna come back to the main window. We're gonna go under Options, Preferences, and right here you can set an external text editor. And let's say we want that to be Notepad++. All right, which has our file in there. If we right mouse click on this and say Properties, uh, we have the target path for this. And I'm going to swing over here and scroll over to the left. We don't want the quotes, but we do want to get the path except for the quotes. And we're going to copy that and we're going to paste it in here and say OK. Now that we've done that, we can come to the File View tab and we can come in under this Data folder And let's look for that test CSV. We can right mouse click on it and say open in text editor. Now it'll open it up in Notepad++. So now we have uh, the data that we're gonna sweep again. And again, each of these columns correspond with the corresponding row here of variables that are in here. So this is corner, string list three, string list two, string list one, and uh, data file list one, and their respected indices that correspond to the indices that are listed out here in our string list. So we could continue to add multiple strings here or add multiple file names to the data file list, and the index would increment each time and in the sweep, batch sweep control CSV file, we just reference the indice that corresponds with that setting. Okay? So that's how 
uh, we can sweep all of that and we have the corner set and now we can go off and do a simulation. So we'll go ahead and maximize that and we'll go zoom to extents and um, let's go ahead and take a look at one more time at the, the models and component names, et cetera. So if we go in under the pin and we choose this J3, we see that we got several models here, but we're only sweeping between two of them, these first two here, okay? And we can see how the submodel name gets set there. And again, the aliases uh, we set up uh, to correspond to the variable names. Go ahead and simulate. And this will take a little bit of time. run through those batch settings, and then we have this data display here. So here you're seeing the display of uh, V1, and we have it indexed uh, to this variable here, IDX, which is tied to this marker uh, that is on this slider. So as we move this marker, you can move to the batch number, and do an individual display on this. And then up here we have a plot of all of them. And we're sweeping this. Uh, traces, we're sweeping them and we're sequencing by line color. And then you have the legend out here. All right. So we actually put down a table as well that has the batch number, the value for the corner, the indice for string list one through three, as well as the indice for the data file list so that you can see what the batch number setting is uh, for each one of these. And that's basically how you sweep all things IBIS. We appreciate your time in viewing this recording and we hope it's helpful. We'll also wrap up uh, this workspace so that you have access to it along with the video link. And that concludes this recording.